Hello, Go Class Monkeys. I want to read you a couple of stories. Um, I picked these stories because uh, they have a lot of U's, letter U's in the stories. Um, they both have letter U's in the title. And so uh, I thought, and I thought they were, I thought you would like these stories. So the first one I'm going to read to you is, I'm going to scoot it back here. Nellie knew and daddy too. There's a U. So new is what the animal they are. G and U is how that's spelled. This is by Anna Dudney. So remember, one name means she wrote the story and drew the pictures. She's the illustrator. Here we go. Nellie knew and daddy too. Nellie loves her daddy new. He always knows just what to do. A great big box, some tape and string. Daddy can make anything. Your daddy might be like that too. First they measure, then they draw. Nellie tapes and daddy saws. And then they add a little glue, Nellie and her daddy knew. Glue has a U in it also. What do you think they're building? A perfect little house for one. But Nellie thinks it's not quite done. It needs some flowers, just a few. Time to shop with daddy new. A big adventure to the store. Plants and hammers, ladders, more. Would she like a better view? Take a ride on Daddy New. You guys might ride on your daddy's shoulders sometimes. That's fun. Having troubles with the pages on this one. Oh my goodness. There we go. More colors than she's ever seen. Purple, yellow, pink, and green. There's a glare, sorry, on the light. I'm trying to get better at that. There we go. Nellie finds the perfect blue. Daddy gets some brushes too. Out with Daddy. Hip hooray! It's a super duper day for Nellie and her Daddy New. Uh-oh! What happened? You see what happened? Daddy? Where are you? Uh-oh. She's lost her Daddy. <gasps> There he is. Swooping, zooming way up high. Daddy holds her and she flies. Guess who loves his Nellie? Who? Yes, it's Daddy. Daddy knew. Time for checkout at the store. Daddy adds just one thing more. A special day for just these two. Nellie and her daddy knew. Paint the house with brick designs, big bright flowers, climbing vines. There's nothing that these two can't do. Nellie and her daddy knew. Time for dinner. Daddy cooks. 
Then they read their favorite books. Every night and every day, Daddy makes it all okay. He always knows just what to do. Nellie's daddy, Daddy knew. So she is sleeping in her brand new house they built. Very fun. So that is Nellie knew and Daddy too. So maybe you guys are getting to spend some extra time with your daddy during this time because maybe he's working from home. So make sure you are giving your daddy lots of hugs because your dad you have great daddies and they're fun and they love you. So okay, so that's the first one. I have a second one. This one is called oh such a glare from the light. Hold on, let me scoot it back. This one is called Julius, the baby of the world by Kevin Hankus, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Here we go. Julius, the baby of the world. And she says, you mean that bump is going to be a baby? I thought you were just getting fat like Aunt Mona. <laughs> Hooray! We're having a baby. She is very excited about that. I'm trying to figure out where to hold this book. It feels like it's getting glared. These are for the baby. She's ready to share her toys even. Before Julius was born, Lily was the best big sister in the world. She gave him things. She told him secrets. And she sang lullabies to him every night. After Julius was born, it was a different story. Lily took her things back. She pinched his tail and she yelled insulting comments into his crib. These are mine. I am the queen, said Lily, and I hate Julius. Wow, that's not very nice. But her parents loved him. They kissed his wet pink nose they admired his small black eyes, and they stroked his sweet white fur. Lily thought his wet pink nose was slimy. She thought his small black eyes were beady, and she thought his sweet white fur was not so sweet, especially when he needed his diaper changed. Julius is the baby of the world, chimed Lily's parents. Disgusting, said Lily. Oh my goodness. There we go. Lily had to share her room with Julius. After Julius goes away, do I get my room back? She asked. Julius isn't going anywhere, said Lily's mother. And he didn't. He stayed and stayed and stayed. Lily was supposed to be very quiet while Julius slept. After Julius goes away, can I talk like a normal person again, she shouted. Julius isn't going anywhere, said Lily's father, and he didn't. He stayed and stayed and stayed. We want Julius to grow up to be as extraordinary as you, said Lily's mother. So we must tell him constantly how beautiful he is and how much we love him. When no one was watching, Lily, when no one was looking, Lily had her own idea. So his parents say, we love you, Julius. You're beautiful, Julius. But when her parents aren't around, you know what Lily says? She says, I hate you. You're ugly. That is so mean. We want Julius to grow up to be as clever as you, said Lily's father, so we must sing him his numbers and letters whenever possible. 
when no one was looking, Lily had her own idea. So his parents sing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and one, two, three, four, five. But when this, her parents aren't around, you know what Lily does? She sings three, eight, one, five, nine, six. And she sings A, J, K, Z, B, S, C. She's trying to mess them up. So Julius doesn't know his letters and numbers. Man. Lily's parents were more than a bit doubtful about leaving the two of them alone together. Lily tried to frighten Julius with her nifty disguises. She learned magic and tried to make him disappear. When that didn't work, she simply pretended that he didn't exist. So she first she puts on that scary mask, then she tries to make him disappear, and then she tries to pretend he's not even there. She says, baby, what baby? I don't hear anything. And poor little Julius is crying. I'm glad you guys aren't big brothers and sisters like Lily. You guys are, are much nicer to your little brothers and sisters. Lily spent more time than usual in the uncooperative chair. She wrote a sign that says, I hate everything. And she stands and she turns around and then she writes another sign. I'm hungry. I have to go to the bathroom. Yes, she is spending a lot of time in the uncooperative chair. And she is not liking that. Lily's parents showered her with hugs and kisses and treats of all shapes and sizes. They even let her stay up 15 minutes later every night. It didn't matter. Nothing worked. I am the queen, said Lily, and I hate Julius. But her parents loved him. They kissed his wet pink nose, they admired his small black eyes, and they stroked his sweet white fur. Julius is the baby of the world, chimed Lily's parents. Disgusting, said Lily. Lily's parents were amused when Julius blew a bubble. Can you believe it? They exclaimed. But if Lily did the exact same thing, they said, Lily, let's mind our manners, please. Lily's parents were dazzled when Julius babbled and gurgled. Such a vocabulary, they exclaimed. But if Lily did the exact same thing, they said, Lily, let's act our age, please. Lily's parents were amazed when Julius screamed. What lung capacity, they exclaimed. But if Lily did the exact same thing, they said, Lily, let's restrain ourselves, please. Or they might say, Lily, use your inside voice. One morning, while Lily was busy playing opera, her mother said, why don't you put some of that verbal exuberance to good use? Why don't you tell Julius a nice story? He's too little to understand a story, said Lily. He can understand it in his own way, said Lily's mother. Okay, said Lily, smiling. This is her story. Julius, the germ of the world, by me, said Lily. Once upon a time, said Lily, there was a baby. His name was Julius. Julius was really a germ. Julius was like dust under your bed. If he was a number, he would be zero. If he was a food, he would be a raisin. Zero is nothing. A raisin tastes like dirt. The end, said Lily. That is not a nice story. The story earned her 10 minutes in the uncooperative chair. Lily is having a very tough time being kind to her baby brother. Lily warned her friends Chester and Wilson and Victor about babies. Trust me, they're dreadful, she said. She warned strangers about babies too. 
You will live to regret that bump under your dress, she said. Lily ran away seven times in one morning. I'm really leaving this time, she called. Who knows where we'll find me? The same afternoon, Lily had a tea party and everyone came. Everyone but Julius. His invitation must have been lost in the mail, she explained. There we go. Lily had glorious dreams about Julius. Oh my goodness, she's dreaming that a big cat is chasing Julius. And ghastly nightmares too. This time she's dreaming that Julius is really, really big and she's really, really little on his high chair. I wouldn't want to have either one of those dreams. Wow. Lily's parents showered her with compliments and praise and niceties of all shapes and sizes. They even let her drink her juice out of the antique china cup. It didn't matter. Nothing worked. I am the queen, said Lily, and I hate Julius. But her parents loved him. They kissed his wet pink nose. They admired his small black eyes and they stroked his sweet white fur. Julius is the baby of the world, chimed Lily's parents. Disgusting, said Lily. She drew a picture of her family and said, my entire complete family, my new cup. And she just drew herself and her mom and dad. She did not draw Julius. When Lily's mother felt up to it, she planned a festive celebration in honor of Julius. All the relatives came. There was quite a spread. What's the big deal, said Lily. Haven't they all seen a silly lump before? Apparently not. All afternoon, the relatives hovered over Julius. They kissed his wet pink nose. They admired his small black eyes and they stroked his sweet white fur. Maybe some of you guys remember when your baby brother or sister was born. Maybe you had a celebration and family came over to see the baby. Disgusting, said Cousin Garland. What, said Lily. Julius, said Cousin Garland. I think his wet pink nose is slimy. I think his small black eyes are beady. And I think his sweet white fur is not so sweet. He needs his diaper changed. Ooh, he smells. Lily's nose twitched. Her eyes narrowed. And her fur stood on end. And her tail quivered. You're talking about my brother, said Lily. And for your information, his nose is shiny. His eyes are sparkly and his fur smells like perfume. Cousin Garland was speechless. He can blow bubbles, continued Lily. He can babble and gurgle, and he can scream better than anyone. Cousin Garland tried to slink out of the room. Stop, said Lily. I am the queen. Watch me closely. Hmm. So she doesn't like it when someone else says unkind things about her baby brother. Interesting. Lily picked up Julius. She kissed his wet pink nose. She admired his small black eyes and she stroked his sweet white fur. Your turn, said Lily, handing Julius over to Cousin Garland. Kiss, admire, stroke, Lily commanded. Now repeat after me, said Lily. Julius is the baby of the world. Julius is the baby of the world, said Cousin Garland. Louder, said Lily. Julius is the baby of the world. And from then on, he was, in everyone's opinion, especially in Lily's. She is finally playing with her baby brother, Julius. 
Julius, the baby of the world. So I don't know what you think, but I know you guys, I've seen you guys with your baby brothers and sisters, and you're very kind and you're very loving. But maybe sometimes you haven't always felt that way. Sometimes maybe you felt a little jealous of the attention that your baby brother or baby sister has gotten. I think that's the way that Lily felt about Julius. But then she didn't like it when someone else didn't say nice things about her baby brother. And then she kind of saw him differently and she realized that he really was pretty cute and pretty special and she was glad to have her baby brother. So that is a cute story. Um, so those are the two stories for today. I hope you, li I hope you like them. Um, and the, uh, another, so the special video, I talked about doing another special video for the letter U. Um, that is still coming. It will come sometime this week, maybe tomorrow. Um, I need to, uh, my, I need to, my daughter's going to help me with that one. And she just started back to her college classes this week. So we kind of got to work it out between, uh, her school, her class schedule and, and, my schedule and do it, uh, work together on that. So that's still coming, but I just, I'm not quite sure when yet, but it'll come. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the stories. Uh, I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you soon. I wish you well. I wish you well all through the day today. I wish you well. Bye. Miss you. Love you. <laughs>